All right, boomers, how are we today? You feeling good? Feeling good to your bones? I know they ache a little bit, probably, you know. You're over 55, over 65, over 75. You're probably in a little pain, but you know what? You're tough. You learn to live with the pain. That's what we do. People don't realize you might get older and wiser, but you get older and you fucking hurt more. No doubt about that. All right, then, now that we've gotten all healthy and happy, let's talk about today's subject, which is famous quotes. I'm pulling one out of the hat. There was thousands of them to pick from, but all of a sudden, my brain, you know how you make these decisions? You don't even know where they come from. They just kind of go poof, and they come to the front of your noggin, and then you say, hey, that's the one. Listen to this one. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Famous. Who is that? Remember, folks? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He is known simply as FDR, our 32nd president of the United States. And, you know, funny thing about that, and when I say funny, I mean peculiar funny. Not funny, ha, ha, ha. The actual quote is, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So, curious, right? How did we miss that? I mean, he made a speech. It's videotape, well, actually filmed, transferred to digital videotape. And there it was. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And we say we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Well, close enough. Ballpark figure just shows you how history gets kind of little, you know, mangled up and twisted around. So let's dig into that quote a little more today. Now you ready with me? Come on. This is the Boomer Island Podcast. Welcome ashore, friends. Well, all right then, let's talk about this quote. And I'm going to use the real quote, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And he used that quote during his inaugural address after his first uh, winning election. The dude won four elections. Served three full terms, and he died in his fourth term. I mean, yeah, that's a death sentence, four terms as president of the United States. I think the guy was a glutton for punishment. Good load. Is that is that sadism or masochism? It's one of those isms, but he had it. But what was on his plate was just monumental. And when he made that quote, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. I don't know why I like saying fear that way, but there you have it. And it was more like, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And there wasn't any big applause or nothing. Everybody just standing around listening to him because it was 1933 and the Great Depression was going on and people were pissed. They were out of work. They were starving. They were just hurting. So he presided or resided or whatever sided he did over the Great Depression And then came along World War II, WW2, the big one. And that's where he came up with another big quote after December 7th, 1941. I'm not a big history buff, but that's when the Japanese came in and bombed old Pearl Harbor, got us into World War II. And that's pretty fascinating if you ever looked on the history of all that because there's conspiracies, ladies and gentlemen. It's like we egged them on. Come on. Oh, hey, our radar is not working. Just come on in. Anyhow, don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But so after... December 7th, he said, it's a day that will live in infamy, or today is a day that will live in infamy. Probably got that one handed down wrong too, but anywho, another thing that he presided over, which was the end of prohibition. Prohibition, you know, the banning of alcohol on a national level lasted from 1920 to 1933. So right when he got in there, I don't know if he had anything to do with it, but it got banned, I think probably because the man needed a cocktail. Okay, here's a few fun facts or a little recap of the man, FDR, Franklin Delano. Delano. I don't know, man. Delano Roosevelt. Go home, Delano. Um, besides presiding over Great Depression, World War II, and Prohibition ending, the man was paralyzed from the waist down, basically paralyzed at the age of 39 from polio. And uh, he hit it really well. So when he was in office, he had it the whole time. 
He conducted those famous fireside chats. That was a radio gig. Try to give us more comfort. The, the president, you could say whatever you want about him. You love his policies or don't. But the man was trying to comfort us and bring us together. Does that sound familiar? Not in 2024. Good lordy, what team are you on? We got to crush the opposition. So we all are on the same team, folks. FDR realized that. Uh, some of the things he did as president, he was the leader of passing these huge government uh, programs, and it was called the, the New Deal, and it created national programs such as the SEC, otherwise known as Securities and Exchange Commission, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC. You might have heard that. You're FDIC insured up to 250000 or whatever they say. Yeah, right. Thanks, banks. And then the biggie was Social Security. So they were trying to, you know, look out for us. We were all hurting. And he broke a presidential tradition of only serving two terms. And he was elected four times, like I said earlier. And he died shortly after he took office for his fourth term at the tender young age of 63. And because of that not his death, but his four terms, Um, the uh, tradition was broken. So uh, Congress went in and made a 22nd Amendment to the Constitution that got ratified in 1951, and that was to prevent the executive branch, in other words, a.k.a. the Presidente, of having too much power. So they limited the presidency to two terms. All right, that's in a nutshell. The man is very intricate, all kinds of information on information on him on the internet if you want to go down that rabbit hole. I mean, a lot of people think you put him up there on Mount Rushmore as one of the greatest ever, and other people, not so much. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about FDR. I'm talk, here to talk about his quote that I think was brilliant. I did look that up thinking that did he write that or did he have a writer? You know, nowadays everybody's got their writers. Where are these words coming from? Um, All I could find, though, looked like he wrote it. That's big time. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. What do you think old FDR means by that? I want you to ponder that a little bit. But yeah, ponder that and then uh, next time... Let's dig deep into that. What are our fears? Do we really have fears or are we just fearing fear? There is a lot of fear out there. You know, we incite fear. Is it all mental or is there clear and present danger fear? So until next time, boomers, you know what? Thanks for listening. Love you. And take care of yourselves. And please try to spread the peace and the love. End of part one, part two coming soon. See ya.